Ah, uh, yes. Finally, we're mixing the cob. So this is a really fun process. It's an extremely healthy process. It's a sustainable process. It's a natural process. It's a beautiful process, and it works. It is the mixing of the cob where the importance lies, where all the work is. It's the mixing of cob where the building really is taking place because all a cob building is is essentially cob mixture piled on top of itself. It's like a huge sand castle but instead of sand it's made out of cob. And so cob is the perfect balance of sand, clay, and straw. If you were to use all clay it would crack. If you use all sand it wouldn't be strong. And when you add the straw, it acts like the rebar in cement. And so there's nothing complex or difficult about it, but the mixture does need to be perfect, for the lack of better words. You've got to have that proper ratio. Now, if you're building, like we are here in India, with raw materials harvested from the land, you're going to be working with inconsistencies. And so you have to really know what a proper mixture feels like, what it looks like, and then also do tests on how it works. Now it's important to take note, if you're not already aware, that this isn't like a mud house, this isn't like a sandcastle. These cob buildings, not only can they be extremely beautiful, but these buildings are far stronger than 99.9% .9 of Western civilized houses. These buildings can last for thousands of years. They can be virtually earthquake proof. They're absolutely fireproof, hurricane proof, virtually tornado proof. They're pest proof, rodent proof. So they are beautiful. They are functional. They are sustainable. And they are extremely safe. Once the base structure of the house or building is built itself out of cob, you can then do all sorts of plasters and embellishments and make it as beautiful and artistic and creative as you would like. Also one of the other amazing things about cobs, you can make it any shape. You can have, you know, waves or ripples. You can have sculptures and designs. You can actually embed your shelving or your benches or any type of furniture or, you know, little candle nooks inside of your walls. You can have round houses, you can have any type of shape you want because it's like clay. You're building with the earth, you're building with clay, and so you don't have to work with rigid straight lines. You don't have all the limitations of mon modern building. So the possibilities are endless. All right, let's see it in action. Okay, you videoing? Mm -hmm. All right, so we're about to mix our first batches of cob. Exciting. We've got two different types of uh, soil here um, that was hand dug out of two different local sites. This site here on the left is a higher clay concentration, and this one on the right is a higher sand concentration. So what we're going to do is we're going to mix 50-50 for now and see how that works. So we're going to mix one part to this left with one part of this right. And if you take a sample of each, in your hands, just by grabbing them, you can feel the density and the stickiness and the difference. The one on the right has much more sand, which is essential. You have to have sand in the cob, but um, clay is also essential and you have to have clay. So if you have too much clay, you're going to have cracking and cracking isn't good. If you have too much sand, it's not going to be strong enough and not strong enough is not good. So you want a perfect balance. And while cob itself is a very simple and easy process, there's really no specific formula per se because all clay and all sand is a little bit different. So it's all about having the feel of what the proper consistency is. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this half and half for now and we're going to bring it over here to our tarp. And we're going to mix it and see if this 50-50 is perfect or if maybe we need a 3 to 1 or a 1 to 3, you know, or whatever ratio it's going to be. So we've got our clay. The next thing we're going to need is our straw. So obviously we've got plenty of straw. 
You know, that's enough. <laughs> Alright, so I got some straw. This is enough for many batches. So what we want to do first is just add a little water. <laughs> and it's actually easier if you make it wetter than drier at first because you can always add more clay or straw, but it's a lot easier to mix it when it's wetter. So all we're going to do, because it's way more energy efficient to use our feet than it is our hands, Mixing these two together uh -huh. and add water and step on it. I want to step on it. Yeah, you can. Go ahead. Hey, I want to. Hey. So there's certain chunks in here that are like clay chunks. Uh -huh. Hey, I want to do it. Yes, go ahead. And I want the clay to all be evenly, evenly mashed in with the sand. I want to step. Go on, step on in. Huh? Hey, step in. anybody who has a, a weight problem can come and join. <laughs> They're going to lose several pounds. <laughs> it's good exercise. It's like a Stairmaster. <laughs> Except for you're building your house while exercising rather than sitting in front of a TV on a machine. It's actually probably good if we like wet down a certain section of it to get it extra wet. Wow, this makes it pretty. All right, so it's feeling pretty good. I think it's actually a little more a little more clay than it needs to be. So I think we can actually add a little bit more of that sand mixture. Not quite 50-50. Well, it really depends. Like, like this is not pure clay. It's a high concentrate clay, but it's not pure clay. So, it's almost impossible to get pure clay unless you buy it from a manufacturer who is taking something like this and filtering it through a, you know, like a screen um, to get a pure substance. So most likely here, you'll never have pure clay to work with. So the ratio percentage is really pretty useless. You know what I mean? Because you don't know what that is. We, we don't know what that is inside. Right, exactly. Now, if you're doing it in the United States, most of the time we just buy it from a manufacturer. So it's pure clay. Right, and then so we buy pure clay, we buy pure sand, and then we mix them together. And normally that is like, you know, one to three. One part clay to three parts sand. Alright, so we also need a little bit more water now. Not too much, but a little bit. And then once you get the ratio pretty close to being right, then we'll add the straw.
step on it again. And now what you want to do is you want to make sure all of this straw is inside the uh, inside that thing. Right. And this straw is what basically serves as like the rebar inside of cement. be able to mix this faster than the cement and it's much cheaper and much more sustainable what's right okay. and then once you know what's right you'll essentially be able to not only build your own building but you'll be able to teach workshops just like me because it's easy you know all it is is it's like baking a cake you know the first time you bake a cake you might have to look at a cookbook right but as soon as you know how to do it and you do it 20 times, you don't need the cookbook anymore. I like cake. Right. Like and then from there, you'll be able to tell people, this is how you bake a cake. People are going to be like, wow, well, you're also, so good at making cakes. And you'll be like, yes, I'm an expert. All right, so it's looking really good. Really? This is like just about perfect. Oh. So now what we'll do is what, well, what we would normally do is we would then take this substance and we would just carry this whole tarp over there and then apply it to the wall. But you um, said we apply it tomorrow, right? But I think it's probably wise if we let the cement dry before we apply it. Uh, yes, yes. Right. Oh, right. So, so what we need to do is either stop making it or keep making it and store it. What is that? So, uh, we decide that it's so fun that we want to make it and store it. So we just make round after round and then store it in a tarp under cover. And as long as it's in a tarp under cover, it can keep for quite a few days and still be an optimal substance and then it can be used readily available whenever the actual building begins. This was an extremely fulfilling and beautiful day. Not only did we make a lot of progress, meaning we built a lot of cob in a perfect ratio that will be ideal for building, but everybody enjoyed it. And this is what's really amazing is that we're actually building a house that can potentially last for thousands of years protecting you from the heat and the cold and the rain and the snow, the high winds, the dust storms, whatever natural elements it are that you would want shelter and protection from, and enjoying it. It's a one-time investment that pays off for your life and your children's life and their children's life and their children's life. It's built out of sustainable materials and we in fact actually harvested them all by hand, locally, Everyone involved learned extremely quickly, and it just proved how simple it really is. How possible it really is to build your own house. There's a few special moments like this clay bath, which is just an extra bonus. And the exercise. Not only are we building a house that will last for thousands of years and protect us from all the elements, but we're enjoying ourselves, and we're getting exercise, we're getting stronger, we're getting our cardio, we're getting our muscles worked. This is a full spectrum experience of benefit. When you see the truth, life becomes magical. Beauty pops up everywhere. And the true miracle of life becomes a reality. Yes, bless.